Hello, I'm Amelia, otherwise known as Gracie, and this is my mother, Heather Harpum, who just wrote a book, and we are exploring Hello Sunshine Offices. Hi guys, I'm Heather Harpum, the author of Reese's Book Club pick for April, Happiness, The Crooked Little Road to Semi Ever After, and we're going to answer a few of your questions. No, I think it's difficult, like... When you have a, an experience like this in early childhood, it's hard to say like what of your present self and like your relationships with people relates back to that experience. I think my relationship with Gabe kind of doesn't depend on any of this stuff. Eden and I, we are still friends. I hope one day to maybe like get an apartment and live with her. Like I consider her one of my very closest friends. Riding is nice and I like enjoy being on a horse, but it's not something that I hold particularly special to me, even though in the book it was special to me at that time. This was a description of her at like three or four years old, so it wasn't like a little, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh my. I wanted to come over and say hi. Hello. Hi. Can I shake your hand? Hi. Hi. It's really nice to meet you. Thank you. So much. Oh my gosh. Hello. I know. Well, I knew you guys were having a little conversation today, but I thought maybe I could ask you some questions too. That would be terrific. <laughs> well, first of all, hi. It's so hi. good to meet you. Nice to meet you. <laughs> you changed your name. From Grace to Amelia, tell me yeah. what happened, what, what inspired you? I was like in first grade or something and I was mm -hmm. just like, I'm tired of being called Gracie. Like I was in a small school and I wanted to be known as something a little different and mm -hmm. kind of take control of my personality and who I was in a way. Yeah. I'm known by like a couple different nicknames. So okay, what are your sense. nicknames? Um, Do you want to say? No. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, no worries, no worries. <laughs> This book is so beautiful, Heather. Thank you so much for sharing your story with the world. And it is a harrowing look at what it means to be a parent in this situation where you have kids that are not well. And I'm just wondering, because I, I am a parent and I have three kids, yeah. how long did it take you to sort of synthesize all of that experience into this book? I don't know if I'll ever finish synthesizing it. It took me five years to get away from the experience or right. to have breathing space from the experience. And then it took five years to write. Well, what is it like to have a book written about you? Uh. <laughs> Do you I mean, and also you were so little. You didn't know a lot of what was happening, right? It's weird because when I first read the book, I was like, I kind of want to own the experience and be like, this happened to me. Like, this is my history. But it's weird because I don't have the most vivid memories of it. I sometimes feel like it's not really my story as... No, it's yeah. true. Even if you had the memories, they wouldn't necessarily be the ones that Maybe stuck you with me. you remember, right. You know, you'd remember it from the inside. Yeah. And it's yeah. told from a perspective of a mother. And I think yes. that the beautiful parts of it are the simple parts where you're watching Spirit on TV, which my <laughs> daughter was obsessed with. Then your brother in his little bee boots. <laughs> I'm just wondering, does he still have those bee boots? He doesn't. And you know, he's 15 now right. and he's like, enraged with me for I writing about those bee boots. Yeah. He's like, I never want to hear about the bee boots again. Um, because he's a manly, you know, 15 year old. But it's that thing, it but was this yes. identifier. It, it made him just, not just another, you know, person that came into the hospital. It identified him as your little brother with the bee boots. Yes. And yeah. His cheerful joy. I love the way you speak about parenting and um, that it takes you down to your studs. Mm -hmm. That it's a choice about the unknown. I, my favorite passage is this one where you say yes to all the unknown things when you're pregnant with um, Gabe. But I love that passage about accepting joy and the, mm. and the joy choice, which I think is really beautiful. I worked really hard and long on that passage, trying to capture that, uh, f the condensed forces that go into kind of claiming something. Yes, we're gonna go forward. Yes, we're gonna make the best of this. There are all these unknowns, but yes. I wonder if you know, if you have any words of positivity or hope for families that are dealing with medical problems with their kids and you know that are sitting in hospitals and not able to read a book right now. You know the what jumps into my mind is just take care of each other. Mm. Uh, that's what we have at the end of the day is the 
small moments of interaction. Of course, you're very focused on your your child and doing everything you can, but also, you know, be good to your partner. Yeah. Well, there's <laughs> so much the ways beautiful that you stuff can. about your relationship with Brian. And Brian, honestly, was much better at that than I was. He could come in with humor and um, and warmth, which is innate. To him. You don't shy away from sort of the real relationship struggles that you had, and I think that's really refreshing and honest because I think books that are fairy tales about relationships <laughs> and marriage and having trouble in their life are just like, I'm sorry, this is just a bunch of crap. <laughs> you know, relationships go up and down like this, so right. I think it's really beautiful about you write about the silences and everything you wanted to say in the silences, but it's actually just okay to say sorry sometimes. Well, your mom's a writer, your dad is a writer, you have a very expressive artistic family. And I saw some pictures that you took of your mom, which were amazing. And um, how else do you like to express yourself? I'm really into poetry. And I really mm. like to write poetry, um, and that's like my main form of self-expression right now. Oh wow! Yeah. Do you have a favorite poet? Um, Dorian Lau. I just connected with her poetry, and that's what kind of brought me into that world and mm. stuff. And something I like to look back on when I'm having trouble. Well, we're so yeah. glad you guys came here. I just love your book so much, Heather, and thank you thank for you, sharing Reese. your life. Thank you so much. And if I can say thank you to you also for the support, the incredible advocacy you're doing to um, tell female stories and tell stories from a women's point of view. It's really a gift oh, to the wow. culture, and especially in this moment in time. So thanks for having us oh, on this thank couch. Thank you for saying that. Keep under telling the umbrella stories. of that big project. Yes, yeah. yes it's amazing. <laughs>